welcome back to another video. Um, I wanted to kind of open this video. I'm still at work right here painting dirt. Um, I wanted to say I might be getting a little ahead of myself here, but while we had some time, I figured it was a good time to do it. Um, this hurricane coming in, some of these little spin-off storms have got to slow down on the corn picking. Um, I got a video coming out. It's just been one thing after another with parts breakage and whatnot. So now that we finally got rolling, I think I'm going to go ahead and get a video. But right now, I caught a minute, so uh, I pulled the 9965 out yesterday and uh, washed on it a little bit. I'm going to kind of go through the heads and just check it this afternoon. So I kind of want to do a quick video on that, on kind of how a cotton picker works and what to look for and how to adjust it and whatnot. So I promise there's a corn picking video coming out. I just wanted to do this one while we had some time because with how we do, as soon as we get done with corn, it'll be peanuts. As soon as we get done with peanuts, it'll be cotton. You really don't catch a break in there. While we got a little break, I was gonna do it, so hope you enjoy the video. All right, so made it in. Here's the 9965. This is one of them. We have three of them. Um, this is the style of cotton picker we run. A little bit older, 90s model picker, basket picker. We don't run roller pickers around here. We just don't have enough cotton to do that. Um, we don't. Uh, there's people around in the area that do, but all the same. The heads are the same. They work the same. Cotton pickers since the 50s when they came out have all worked the exact same way. So, I'm going to show you some tips, tricks, whatever, adjustments, everything you need to kind of keep an eye on, on real quick. And just make sure all the cotton's away from around in the engine bay because I pressure washed on it last night and just moved it over here. So, if I washed any of it in a place it shouldn't be and then it dried and it's sitting on something that'll get hot when we crank it, that would not be a good thing. So, I'm going to check it out real quick and I'll get back to you and show you how these heads work. All right, so the picker looks good back there. Give you a quick rundown of how this works so you see all these little fingers they're called spindles and uh you can kind of see from here these barbs they have on them they're sharp what they do these spindles are turning around like a drill bit and these bars there's i think i want to say there's like 16 of them i may be 100 wrong on that anyway there's several of them and they're kind of moving around in a circle this way while those spindles are spinning they come by the cotton plant snag the cotton on them little barbs, wind them up. So once the cotton is wound up on the spindle, back here is your doffers. And if you'll look, they're almost touching up under. This doffer stack is rotating the opposite way that these spindles are turning, and they're kind of made of this rubbery material. Anyway, the tolerances are really tight on it, as you can see right there. But they knock the cotton off. The air ducts pick them up, fans blow them up there in the basket. Then the spindles come by these moisture stacks and there's soapy water you mix up kind of on the back of the picker up there. And uh, it's constantly running out here. And every time they come by and they just get kind of cleaned off the sap and the dirt and whatnot. That way the cotton doesn't stick to them. But you can see the barbs right there I'm talking about. And I'll show you, i bust the picker off and show you kind of what I'm talking about. The way they spin. So for those of you farmers kind of up north of us that uh, hadn't really seen a cotton picker, if you don't know, cotton is mainly grown kind of here in the south, all the way across the south part of the country. But anyway, for those of you who have uh, been in a combine or whatever, never been in a cotton picker, so it's hydrostatic drive, same way as a combine. Your header headers are run off the hydrostat also, so they match your speed. Like if you barely are moving the heads barely turn they hook to the hydrostat so the faster you push it the faster they turn I'm about to show you that i'm gonna bust it off and turn it as slow as i can get it to move to show you how it works and then i'll show you how fast they can spin up to so down here on the last row unit is the easiest to see so if you'll see these spindles are spinning and they strip the cotton off in here just like that the cotton comes through here strips the cotton off and when it comes by these dolphers these dolphers knock it off there's the back set so you have a drum up front of these and then whatever cotton the front ones miss there's a whole different drum back there that gets basically what's left i think the front drum picks up about two-thirds of the cotton the back drum catches the other third but uh, i'm gonna spin it on up kind of to picking speed and show you what it looks like when it's running so this is not quite wide open on the high speed So, it's easy to be intimidated by that, by all the moving pieces. 
And so, you see the lube button here in this tank right here. So I mentioned the soapy water. Your soapy water goes in this tank on this side. Over here, and I'll show you that in a minute, you have what they call spindle grease. It's almost like, I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like cornhead grease. It's really thin, but it's still grease. It's almost like a, like kind of like lard or something like that. You pump it in this tank and then every, I want to say six hours of run time is what we do. You can hit this lube button and it lubes all those bars. Those bars have little gears and they're spinning them spindles and it fills it up with grease. And so funny enough, you'd think cotton, you know, is bad as it is to be you know to get discolored or whatever with grease you know you'd think it would pick up a lot of grease this is one of the greasiest machines you can work on because there are so many moving parts so i get all that out of the way now that you know how picker works some of the stuff i was talking about adjusting and these are just things simple things that can make you more money because every pound of cotton you leave out there is money left on the ground so one of the more important things and this is yearly maintenance on most farms. Um, the dolphin stack, the, the clearance, well, for one, the shape of your dolphins. You want, these are starting to round a little bit, but you want a square edge right there to knock that cotton off. You want it to strip it off those spindles. Plus, how much knot is left right here. You can take these things and get them reground, and that's what we should do. We just don't have enough cotton to do that every year to make the cost of that work out, because cotton picker head maintenance is expensive. So, the clearance. This stack with an adjustable bolt up there moves up and down. And you want it to be a certain distance from that spindle. It can't hit, because if it hits, you start tearing stuff up, you start wearing dolphers out, you start wearing spindles out. Um, another thing, these moisture pads, you check and make sure all the fans are left on them and that they're not brittle. Some of them are. I see some on the back that we're gonna have to replace. Um, spindles, you want them to be sharp. Um, I know a lot of people pull the top several out put those on the bottom and replace the top like the top half pull them out and uh, stick them on the bottom because the bottom gets the majority of the dirt and the thick part of the stalk on cotton um anyway so these seem to be in good shape i think these heads were kind of gone through before last year and we don't pick but a couple hundred acres a year um of cotton so anyway your clearance oh yeah your uh so your shoots on the side i don't know what the technical term for this is if you'll see your stalk goes in here and goes around them spindles on that side that's what that plastic is for right there so let me flip the camera around this is the back side of that door right there that i was talking about if you'll see it's spring loaded you can see these springs on it like that anyway these bolts right here adjust this and what you want it to do and i can't tell these are much out of adjustment those are about right you want something like three to five millimeters maybe clearance between the end of those spindles and that wall because if you don't some of that cotton will slip around um anyway i'm gonna check this doll for clearance real quick if i find any of them that's out i'm gonna show you how to adjust them but i don't feel like any of these are out these are them doors on this side um and just to kind of show you how many moving parts are in here not that you can't already tell but uh Let's go over here. This head's the easiest one to get to and access. So, see all these gears and all this grease? That's what spindle grease looks like. It's really, really thin compared to regular grease. But um, anyway, it's just caked up in here. It's everywhere. So anyway, I'm on a, oh, and real quick while I got you here. You see how the row widths are easily adjustable. That's how you get between them to work. This wrench right here, the one that adjusts the width of these rows is also the same one that'll adjust your dolphin stacks right here. So you got a jam nut and a bolt. Um, everybody says the thickness of a dollar bill between them. The problem is with that, the reason you really need somebody who knows what they're doing. So these dolphers may not all be perfectly spaced apart like these spindles are these spindles are on a machine bar like that these dolphins are just kind of on a on a rod with some spacers between them if those spacers or anything's just a grunt off you could go to hitting one of these with one spindle or something like that or the bottoms of these bars where they spin on this platform right here can wear down over time and get shorter so then some of your bars will be further away um 
from your dolphin than the rest of them. So there's just stuff like that. You really need somebody who knows what they're doing. We don't take it that seriously. Not not because of any other reason than we just don't have enough cotton to really pay a professional to come out here and go through it. Another easy thing to look for, these whole bars can go dead because of this. You can see it right here. See me moving it. This is the little gear that drives all those spindles turning. Um, and they have a roll pin in them. That roll pin can shear, then every spindle on that bar goes dead. That bar ain't picking cotton. Or you can have individual dead spindles. If you'll, uh, you'll get right here and just turn it slow and look, every now and then you'll see one spindle that's not turning. Most of the time, you get your spindle socket, pull this out, replace it with a new spindle, back good to go. Um, so that's something else I'm gonna have to check for. Uh, the easiest way really to check doffer clearance is get it in a spot. And this one's got a little bit of drag to it. So that's just right on that one. Get it where the spindles are touching. That one's got a grunt of drag to it. That's the easiest way to do it. That's not perfect. I know some of you on here are probably gonna freak out and say it's not how you do it. It's not how you do it. Don't take this advice if you if you're picking a pile of cotton. But um, if you're just kind of like us and just pick a little bit, um, then it'll work. So I'm gonna open these doors up, run it slow, just look for dead bars or dead spindles. Um, I hadn't noticed any on the front, especially the front side. Where you, that's not good, that's a grease line that's unhooked. That's something that needs fixing. You'll see these little barb fittings, like that right there. Um, That's what the grease line hooks to, and it greases this whole bar. And you'll see grease come out from around these bushings right here, Um, once you grease it. Anyway, all right, I'm gonna open it up, check for dead fennels, dead bars, well whatnot, I'll let you know if I find anything. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit more about how a cotton picker works. They're a real interesting machine. They uh, have a lot of moving parts, as I say. There's, I wouldn't be scared to say, since there's two drums per uh, row unit, probably over a thousand spindles in this picker. Um, every one of the spindles has a gear on it. Every one of the bars has a gear to turn every spindle. That's multiple bearings. I mean, there's just a little pile of stuff, chains driving stuff. Um, I didn't see any dead spindles, surprisingly. All the doffer stacks seem to be, you know, within tolerance on on height. They all look good. Like I said, this picker doesn't have very many acres on it. We bought it last year and it had been kind of gone through. Um, I did leave that open and turn that bar with the missing line back around because that's a pretty big deal that uh, that bar don't get lubed very many times and we'll be putting the bar back in it. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, cotton picking is definitely my favorite type of harvest is a little bit faster you know a little bit more seems like more going on so anyway i'll try to crank a corn video out i'm excited about this we've got the peanut pickers out going through them and that other one a little bit right there on the other side of that tractor so stay tuned if you like the uh, farming content we're gonna come to you with some more of it thank you